Welcome everyone, thanks for joining us. We're gonna go over the top 10 events in Bitcoin's history, which has been just over one decade at this point. Bitcoin uh, creator Satoshi Nakamoto reportedly began working on Bitcoin in 2007 and then published the white paper on Halloween 2008, October 31st. In just eight pages, Nakamoto describes how the Byzantine general's problem could be solved. In the earliest days of Bitcoin, once the Genesis block had been mined on January 3rd, 2009, Nakamoto sent messages back and forth with people such as Hal Finney, Mike Hearn, and Gavin Andreessen to discuss this nascent network. A lot of this discussion took place on BitcoinTalk.org, which was a forum created by Nakamoto, which is today moderated by Thamos, which is a pen name. Now, let's go over the top 10 events. The first one that I list is the first ever Bitcoin transaction. Nine days after the Genesis block was mined, the first ever Bitcoin transaction was sent from Nakamoto to Hal Finney, who was a cryptographer who had actually created a proof of work system before Bitcoin had even existed. He tweeted on January 10th, 2009, quote, running Bitcoin. Finney lived in the Los Angeles area, which was not too far from Dorian Nakamoto, the man who Newsweek ultimately doxed in 2014 as the inventor of Bitcoin though this theory has largely been debunked by people in the industry. And you can see Mr. Nakamoto, Dorian Nakamoto, at conferences today. Somewhat of a booth babe, if you will. Finney was later diagnosed with ALS and died almost five years later at the age of 58. He is survived by his wife, Fran, and their two children. The next biggest event that we list on this uh, top 10 events of Bitcoin's first 10 and a half years is WikiLeaks accepting of Bitcoin. WikiLeaks announced in 2011 on Twitter that it would begin accepting Bitcoin donations. In one of his last posts on BitcoinTalk.org, Bitcoin creator Satoshi Nakamoto mentioned WikiLeaks. Quote, the project needs to grow gradually so the software can be strengthened along the way, he wrote in 2010. I make this appeal to WikiLeaks not to try to use Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a small beta community in its infancy. You would not stand to get more than pocket change and the heat you bring would likely destroy us at this stage. When WikiLeaks did ultimately greenlight Bitcoin, Nakamoto shared his thoughts once more. Quote, it would have been nice to get this attention in any other context. WikiLeaks has kicked the hornet's nest and the swarm is heading towards us. The next biggest event is Gavin Andreessen inheriting role as chief developer from Nakamoto. A lot of people say that a couple of incidences, WikiLeaks accepting Bitcoin, and Dreesen visiting the CIA ultimately pulled Nakamoto, the pseudonymous founder of Bitcoin, away from the nascent distributed network. When Nakamoto handed the network alert key and control of the Bitcoin code repository to Gavin and Dreesen in 2011, analysts estimated the creator had by then mined approximately 1 million Bitcoins. And Dreesen was now chief developer of the open source code. In 2012, Andreessen, who also established, interestingly, the Bitcoin Foundation in 2012, which was a way to educate regulators about the nascent digital currency, received invites from the CIA, the Central Inta Intelligence Agency out of the U.S. The Bitcoin community vehemently debated this decision to speak with the agency. And as Andreessen said of Nakamoto, quote, last email I sent him, I told him I was going to talk to the CIA. And that was in a 2012 thread. The next biggest event that we go over in terms of uh, Bitcoin's history is when then Bitcoin developer Jeff Garzik, who now runs Block, which is an enterprise blockchain company, received the first ASIC Bitcoin miner. ASIC stands for Application Specific Integrated Chips. These chips are designed specifically for mining GPU coins. A Bitcoin ASIC miner specializes in hashing the SHA-256 algorithm, which is Bitcoin's cryptographic hash algorithm. January 30th, 2013, Mr. Garzik tweets, quote, my wife informs me that a package from China arrived. We'll investigate when I return. Garzik reported his Avalon A3256 had paid for itself by February 9th, 2013, quote, including electricity costs, the Avalon ASIC Bitcoin miner has now paid for itself. The next biggest event we want to go over today is when, uh, Bitcoin discovered a price, the Bitcoin Pizza Day. A internet user who goes by Laszlo, who had also made contrib contributions to Bitcoin source code, made the first documented purchase of a good with Bitcoin when he bought 
two Domino's pizzas from Jericho's, who reportedly was just 18 years old at the time of the transaction. These two Domino pizzas cost 10,000 BTC, which posits the price of Bitcoin then at around 0 0.003 cents per Bitcoin. Laszlo posted on May 17, 2010, his request to purchase the Bitcoin, and he reported the completion of the transaction to the Bitcoin community, or nascent industry, I think is more appropriate. I have, we'll go over this, but I have, uh, I take contention with this notion that there's a Bitcoin community. I, I think this might be kind of a myth we tell ourselves, but moving on, um, he reported this on May 22nd, this transaction. Quote, I just want to report that I successfully traded 10,000 Bitcoins for pizza. Thanks, Jericho's. The pizza index today refers to the value of the Bitcoin spent on the pizzas were they sold for U.S. dollars and not pizza. That amount topped $15.5 million in April 2017, and today is more than like $90 million. May 22nd will forever be known as Bitcoin Pizza Day so long as the Bitcoin network persists. The next biggest event, which actually might be the biggest event on this list, was the rise and the fall of the Silk Road. Silk Road, which was named after the trade route connecting Europe to East Asia, was created by developer and administrator Ross Ulbricht. He was convicted of running it, at least. The website operated as a tour hidden service. While Ulbricht has admitted to creating the site, he has not admitted to running it the whole time it was online. The Silk Road was considered by users to be almost entirely anonymous. On the Silk Road, users enjoyed enhanced privacy, sometimes to the point of anonymity, where they shopped for mostly cannabis, mostly cannabis, which is legal in many states today, but also mushrooms, which a lot of people say should be legal. Acid, now, acid is probably created by an intelligence agency to control minds, so I'm not a big fan of that one. Mushrooms come from the earth, but this is kind of a different story. And more. Ulbricht, a first-time offender, was sentenced to two life sentences plus 40 years without parole. The Silk Road prohibited the sale of weapons, pedophilia, and stolen info. The rules of using Silk Road stated you were not supposed to do harm to others. The next biggest event on this list in the history of Bitcoin is the collapse of Mt. Gox. Before it shuttered, Mt. Gox handled 70% of all Bitcoin transactions. The Tokyo Base Exchange filed for bankruptcy protection under Japanese law in early 2014. With an approximate value of $460 million at the time, 850,000 Bitcoins had gone missing though 200,000 were found, ultimately, by the exchange. 27 million in bank deposits, nonetheless, could not be accounted for. Site owner Mark Capellis blamed hackers. The Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department believes 643,000 bitcoins went missing as a result of fraud. Bankruptcy proceedings took place in April 2014 and continue until this day. The next biggest event? is the 2013 unintentional Bitcoin fork. In March 2013, the blockchain temporarily split into two independent chains with different rules due to a bug ver in version 0.8 of the Bitcoin software. Miners, merchants, and users ran a new divergent version of the blockchain. The old version of Bitcoin and the new version were simply not compatible any longer. Mining pools running the new version 0.8.0 were asked to roll back to version point zero point seven to create a single blockchain compatible with all Bitcoin software. Merchants did not have to do anything. And I remember that these uh, threads went quite viral at the time, particularly on Reddit's our Bitcoin, but of course also on the above mentioned BitcoinTalk.org. The core developers soon thereafter released a 0.8.1 version that avoids creating blocks that are incompatible with older versions. The next biggest event in the history of Bitcoin on our list is Mike Hearn leaving. Mike Hearn was an OG Bitcoin developer who ultimately took a job with R3. He wrote a post on Medium talking about his decision, thinking that Bitcoin and its original vision had long been lost. Bitcoin lead developer Mike Kern blogged in 2016 that his time in Bitcoin was over. He had sold his remaining holdings and had taken a job at R3 CEV, an enterprise consortium working on blockchain for enterprise. He would lead up the Corda project particularly. 
Hearn, who had spent more than five years working on the web-based currency, had left the development team. Quote, despite knowing that Bitcoin could fail all along, the now inescapable conclusion that it has failed still saddens me greatly, Hearn wrote on Medium. Before leaving, Hearn and Andreessen had disagreed with other developers over whether the blocks in which Bitcoin transactions are processed should be enlarged. Hearn called the block capacity at the time of one megabyte, quote, an entirely artificial capacity cap. Hearn and Andreessen had proposed an alternative, Bitcoin XT. If an IT system runs out of capacity like that, then all kinds of things go wrong. All hell breaks loose, Hearn said in a Reuters article. Hearn said at the time that the Bitcoin community had, quote, failed at governance of Bitcoin's code. The next biggest event is the Bitcoin, the Pirate at 40, quote, Ponzi scheme that took place largely on BitcoinTalk.org. It was a massive event and one that I think early adopters remember quite fondly and one that ultimately, I think, uh, the ending of which went unknown to most participants uh, in the Bitcoin industry at that time. So it's an interesting story. On the BitcoinTalk.org forum in November 2011, Pirate of 40 promised investors a 7% weekly return on deposits of over 25,000 BTC, which was worth more than 275,000 at the time. Pirate, Pirate of 40 ended the fund in August of 2012, saying that it had just simply become too large for him to manage. The SEC would, however, then charge Trendon Shavers, the man behind the screen name Pirate of 40, with running an illegal Ponzi scheme that was worth approximately $4.5 million at the time. Shavers was ordered to pay more than $40 million in disgorgement or illegal profits back, including a $150,000 civil penalty. His lawyer, Jason Seibert, who is, I think, probably one of the best lawyers in crypto, period, has defended Shavers, noting that it wasn't a Ponzi scheme like so many assume. Quote, he paid as many people back as he could in the most fair way he could do it, but not everyone got paid back, said Seibert. Quote, so people assumed it must be a Ponzi scheme. A notable mention in terms of the biggest event in, uh, in uh, Bitcoin history, one which I think is still ongoing in some ways, was the block size debate. It's more an ongoing debate than a, an event. The Bitcoin block size takes the cake as the, most cake as the most hotly contested blockchain issue in the history of Bitcoin. Satoshi originally limited Bitcoin's block size to one megabyte in 2010. But this did not become a public issue until a few years later in March 2013. The Bitcoin network batches transactions into chain blocks along the blockchain and therefore, which are released every 10 minutes to the network. The Bitcoin max block size parameters limits, quote, on-chain transactions, which leads to network congestion and higher transaction fees, especially in times of feverish demand, but not always. Garzik posted about the block size in 2010, suggesting the networks support more than 3 to 10 transactions per second. This suggestion was rejected. Nakamoto had already bequeathed BitcoinTalk.org to a moderator, Tamos, who we mentioned before, who noted this would represent a consensus parameter change and would need to be coordinated across the network. This set the stage for the Bitcoin block size debate, which would then ultimately result in the hard fork of Bitcoin into Bitcoin Cash, which the kind of brand of which is managed by Roger Ver. He got the backing of uh, really big players in the space, including Bitmain at the time, I believe. And uh, I want to thank everyone for watching. This has been the biggest events in the history of Bitcoin. And uh, please feel free to check out all of our content at goldsilverbitcoin.com. You can also find us on uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, BitChute, and uh, you know Gab, as well as Parler, etc. So thanks for uh, watching.